I created this channel in December of 2012. The world was supposed to end that month, and it didn't. Ten years later, you're all stuck here with me. You're locked in here with me! I have a general rule that if a video is older than two years, I hate it. If I could, I would continuously update my old vids like George Lucas. I may have gone too far in a few places. This video, it doesn't represent my channel. I like this new one instead, and then you kind of repeat that cycle forever. Perhaps to celebrate a decade of this channel, or destroy any self-respect I might have, or maybe just to not think, since my brain hasn't really gotten a lot of sleep lately. How about you join me as we travel back to the past and revisit how absolutely terrible my old videos were? I've been making fun of Michael Bay too much on the other channel. It's time I get a taste of my own medicine. If anything got me onto this wacky path, it was the friend group I had in high school. We all liked stuff like Red Alert, World at War, Fallout. While not particularly history, these were properties that were based in military stuff from the past. And you know what they say, boys pick like one personality and then stick with it forever. And I guess that laid the foundation into finding alternate history interesting. I first heard about it from a buddy. He liked the books from a guy called Harry Turtledove, and even sent me a video from this random YouTube channel. It was some video about World War II or the Civil War, I don't remember. But I remember the channel, Alternate History PT. My nick is Alternate History PT, my name is Bruno and I am Portuguese. <laughs> Now back then, alternate history channels all called themselves alternate history and then whatever place you were from. PT meant Portugal. There was also alternate history New York and a few others I can't really remember, but they're all named after states. Following that same naming convention, this channel technically should have been called alternate history Ohio. Alternate history PT had massive numbers. He was the biggest alternate history channel, 3,000 subscribers. But Alternate History PT had a very interesting bias. Every scenario of his ended in global communism. <laughs> As flawed as his videos were, he was a pretty nice guy. Helped get Alternate History Hub into orbit, and I'm forever grateful for that. Now, the reason I lore dumped that entire origin story is because you need to know the context. I took notes from what PT did, and also what PT didn't do. But just like the other channels at the time, I followed the standard format for these videos. <sighs> a PowerPoint presentation. Yep. And that's how this channel began, imitating a Portuguese guy who had every video end in global communism. When this channel began, I created the most unwatchable abominations. It is a miracle that this got past a thousand subs. The lesson here, kids, is that you too can succeed on YouTube if you get into a micro niche with barely any standards. The videos for a while didn't have my voice. But with that said, my first video did have my voice. Oh boy, did it. Hi, welcome to the Alternate History Hub. Now, this channel was created to explore the possibilities of what might have been. These things could have been for the better or for, for the worst. Maybe it was for the best that I didn't speak. Look, I get it. I was young and everything, but this is, uh, very clearly the first video on the channel. Which makes no sense, because I made plenty of videos before this one. Lots of cartoons or skits with my friends. I knew how to make videos, so why was this so low quality? Did I just not care? Did I want this video out immediately to simply announce it? I don't know. Let's hope it improves from here. Oh God. For the first year, this channel was just infrequent uploads of poorly made PowerPoint videos. The most amateur stuff you could think of. The thumbnails were just images I found on the front page of Google. I made these in an afternoon when I was bored like somebody would doodle, and oh god does it show. So what would the world be like if the Japanese Empire remained alive today? One, the Pacific region would look like this. These are so bad, I had to unlist them from the channel. You you can't access them normally. Except for now. Link to enjoy them all in the description. Please be nice. 
So this was the first ever scenario. And, and yeah, I could see that. The premise of this scenario is that the Black Death is so bad, like 90% of Europe is wiped out. New World style. Leads to a power vacuum since England, Holy Roman Empire, France, and the Italian and Russia states would have fell into anarchy. We're off to a great start. Maybe it gets a little better. What the scallop? Woo! Where do I even begin? Uh, I guess, uh, the French tribes part. What happened to the Germans? Why is Western Europe just split between the British tribes and French tribes? When does this ever take place? This is supposed to be past the 1500s. The Scandinavians just devolved back into Vikings. I love that there isn't even a specified description for this whole area. It's not a kingdom or a commonwealth. It's just the Poles. By this time, the last remaining tribes of the British Isles and Norwegian lands, Norwegian lands, would have fallen to some type of empire. What, what empire is that? The empire. <laughs> Two days later, I made this scenario where World War II ended differently. Yeah, you heard me right. Shows you the quality control here. The thumbnail is a great sign, straight from Google Images. Largest war in human history, three and a half minutes. This video was created from an unbiased view of history. The audacity of this kid. But in my past defense, what I was trying to say is that I was an alternate history channel that wasn't at least, you know. In the video where the Mongol Empire never collapses, they invade Alaska and spark the first Mongol First Nation War. Whatever that means. This is a war that the Mongols end up winning, and then they colonize America. All of this, of course, with Halo 4 music playing in the background. So that's wild. From December 2012 to September 15th, that's how these videos were. I didn't reach 100 subscribers until August 2013. I wonder why it took so long. Young Cody had to speak. And speak he did. The first video I ever voiced was, what if the US was a monarchy? I wasn't the most confident speaker. How would this have changed the US's perspective on the world, and how democracy would be viewed in general? And how freedom would be viewed in general? This whole scenario is pretty crazy. Like, Washington declares himself king, and everyone goes along with it. The reason I gave was that the people would still get their taxation with representation, like that was the only cause for the revolution, and nothing else. Washington dies and leaves no heirs, so the US just explodes into a series of wars over the crown. A bunch of rich families fight using personal militias to be the next American monarch. And honestly, as unrealistic as that is, that sounds like an awesome story. Story. Combine Game of Thrones with John Adams. Get on this, HBO. So many early videos were just trying to get a hold of reading from a script. Eventually, one family secures the throne and establishes a new house in the capital, so the new monarchy house would try to expand America's influence. It's like I'm talking in front of the class. Uh, yes, this is my report on if the Roman Empire never fell, part six. I forgot how all of these were just slideshows. Zoom in. Zoom out. We. Before the channel would be anything remotely professional, it was just kind of a dumb hobby. Literally something I would do if I was bored. And a great example of that is Suggestion Box. So, me and my buddy Tyler, not that Tyler, got really bored hanging out one day and we decided, you know, why don't we just make some unscripted videos where we read off like 10 suggestions from fans and then make up the scenarios off the top of our heads. It went about as poorly as you might imagine. Okay, so our next question is from Victor Reznov. The numbers, Mason! <laughs> yes. Uh, and he asks, what if the KKK won their war against civil rights? But it did do its job well, being something creative with friends to just pass the time. And it's something that we kind of always did. Ah. And then we kind of just got bored of doing it. And that was the end of Suggestion Box. It was around this time that I started saying, this is Cody of Alternate History Hub. Till next time, this is Cody from the Alternate History Hub. How do I end the video? Use the line. Maybe it was to pretend to be more professional, which is why there were a lot of updates too. Update on reaching 2,000 subscribers. 
Update on not uploading for like three months because I had a summer job. Update on going to San Diego Comic-Con. Why did I need to tell people I was doing that? Oh, what's this? Uh, oh man, I remember that. Hello and welcome to Cody Rants about the new YouTube layout. I want this to change. There is a petition on change.org to change the YouTube layout back to the way it was, or at least change the comment section so we don't have to use Google Plus anymore, because... What else is there? What the fuck? So it's 2014, and America is getting its very own Godzilla reboot. The start of what WB now calls The Monsterverse, a franchise only me and like 12 other people actually care about. In the trailers, the new movie seemed to go for a more grounded approach. So I thought, hey, imagine if this giant lizard was actually real. That'd be kind of neat. And so I made this video. It was the first big hit on my channel, first video to reach a million views, and it had nothing to do with alternate history. It'd be like if Mr. Beast's first viral hit was from stealing people's money. So how was the video that started it all? Godzilla is the king of monsters. Jesus, don't scream at me. Everyone falls into a pattern that works for them while narrating. And this incredibly unnatural news speaker voice was what I fell into, I guess. The destroyed building screaming citizens, entire cities on fire. In movies, the result is entertaining. In real life, however, it would probably be less so. And today, and my tiny little nipples went to France. It would plague this channel for years to come. This video is kind of just the basic premise of a kaiju movie told with geopolitics. Let's well actually my old content. Businesses could lose product, and thus investors would not want to put money into something that could be so vulnerable and destroyed. I mean, would they? Maybe with his initial discovery there would be some hit to trade, but there's always some threat to shipping. Godzilla just becomes one of them. In the United States, waves of people would move from the east and west coast and into regions such as the Rockies or the Great Lakes. Really depends on what the size of these waves are, isn't it? Are we talking thousands of people? Then sure, yeah, I could see that. But millions leaving the coast? <laughs> Uh, no. Leaving your home and life over a perceived threat isn't easy. Hell, each hurricane season there's always people left stranded by very predictable storms. And the reason for that is they either can't afford to leave their house, or they don't expect to be hit by a real disaster, most of the time. Now if the events of the entire MonsterVerse occurred, then that's a different story. Now is the time to panic! <laughs> You know, I did say Fallout kind of got me into this whole thing in the first place, so I shouldn't be shocked that it ended up being my most watched video ever. A video that looks like this. 10 million views. And I mean, after rewatching it, it's not that bad. The visuals are terrible. Absolutely terrible. Oh god. For a cute little summary of the Fallout world without getting too deep into the lore, it's an introduction for anyone that hasn't played the previous games. But like... <laughs> Come on, play the previous games. Don't just watch this and then dive headfirst into Bethesda's slop. Catch you up on the lore of this universe before the big kahuna itself comes out. Ah, <sighs> I remember being excited for Fallout 4. I remember being excited for a lot of things. I entirely forgot that I talked about the factions. For like seven years, I figured that the video ended once the Great War began. But it turns out that's only halfway through the video. Most of the stuff I actually talk about is in the Fallout world itself. Factions like the Enclave or NCR. That's kind of cool. It was after this video release that my brother Tyler came to me. Yes, that Tyler. And he said, hey, you know, you should probably start monetizing these videos, don't you think? I wasn't doing that yet. Oh yeah, thanks Ty, I should look into that. So it's thanks to my brother Tyler for why this channel is even a job in the first place. So getting back on track, the Fallout video isn't as bad as I feared. Yippee. I guess if this was the biggest video I ever made, I wouldn't really complain too much. There are much worse fates on this site to be remembered for. And as a fan, it's neat to kinda still be linked to this franchise I still love. No matter what Todd tries to do to it, Todd Howard has made some pretty god-awful things, but at least he never made this.
This video stayed on my channel for the last seven years, and I never once thought or rewatched it. It wasn't until a few months ago that someone online came up to me and said, Hey, that Africa video you did? It was pretty bad. And I thought, oh, there's no way it was that bad. What would life be like in Sub-Sahara Africa in this alternate timeline? Would it be a utopian paradise free from the violence stirred by Europe? Or would it be a backwards, uncivilized place never improving? The answer is not so black and white. Pun intended. Um, that was, a. Uh... That was really bad. If there was a video that ever would have gotten me canceled, it would be this one. Nobody ever did it though, so screw it, I'm gonna cancel myself. So the premise here is that instead of dividing Africa in the 19th century, European kingdoms just don't do that. They still hold on to some territory, but it's like 10%. Trading with Africans who brought resources from the center of the continent, like ivory, gold, and other goods. Slaves. They bought slaves. The initial premise I bring up is that European kingdoms continued to do the whole trading thing they were doing for centuries, and don't simply carve up Africa. So what I'm going to assume that means is 1884, because that's when all of this happened. What else would it mean? If Europeans were going to trade with Sub-Saharan Africans instead of conquering them, native kingdoms would need to expand to keep up with demand. That isn't alternate history, you idiot. That's exactly what happened for centuries. You aren't describing some crazy, wacky scenario. That's just the history of the Congo. They spread to capture people and sell them to Europeans for weapons and technology. And then that cycle just kept repeating for 400 years. If any video needed an actual remake, it's this one. What even is this map? What does this mean? Let's talk about something less controversial. Of course. What if in this timeline, instead of using his hate against the Jews and non-Germans, Hitler used his hate to do other things. That was a whirlwind of a sentence. I like this idea that Hitler can channel his hateful energy into something else, like its key from Dragon Ball. What if Hitler didn't hate Jews? Whatever caused him to hate Jews just didn't happen. So what am I saying here? Am I saying that Hitler just started hating Jews because he had a bad experience with them or something? Is Hitler the Joker? All it took was one bad day? Basically, there would be an extreme purge of anything British, French, or communist instead of anything Jewish. Ah, uh, that's one theory. He did hate the British and the French. He hated a lot of groups. He was Hitler. Hitler somehow becomes leader of Germany, and the Nazi party becomes a very far-right and militaristic organization. However, they are not anti-Semitic. This is such a baffling scenario. Why did I make this? This is like imagining if Mao actually loved capitalism, or if Napoleon was seven feet tall. This video is my equivalent of Joe Steele. Since Hitler would not be an anti-Semi or a bigot of any kind, he's- Wait, 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 wait. I thought the scenario was that Hitler just wasn't an anti-Semite. When was it established that you actually meant he wasn't a bigot of any kind? Or a bigot of any kind? Because that's a big difference. Hitler not only doesn't hate the Jews anymore, but he tolerates all different people like Captain Planet. Does Hitler stand for trans rights? Since Hitler was as far right as you could get, he most likely would use that nationalism and drive Germany for war against Britain and France. Okay, so Hitler isn't a bigot, and despite the Nazis in general not blaming the Jews or any minority, they are still able to take over Germany because they hated Britain and France just that much. This was post-World War I Germany. Everyone hated Britain and France. That was probably the least unique opinion the Nazis had. Why would he go to war then? Was it just because he was crazy? So would Hitler still go to war? Odds are, yes. He was still crazy and paranoid even without his bigotry and anti-Semitism. Why? What is this? This is so hard. My brain. Hitler, however, invades Poland with the same agreement with the Russians as in our timeline. In order to restore land from the old German Empire, yet he doesn't betray Stalin and invade Russia. Wait, so the Nazis still hate communism, yet they don't invade the Soviet Union because they don't want to genocide the Jews? I think anti-communism is still enough to start a war. Why does this have 700,000 views? I don't even know why I made this video. 
Like, honestly, I really regret ever doing it. So much of the information is stuff straight from the ending of the manga. Most of the lore I talk about is just the plot. A large portion of what makes Attack on Titan interesting in the first place is uncovering this greater mystery. And yet, this YouTube video I made five years ago just lists it all out. Eldian Empire, Ymir, Founding Titan. Who was this even made for? Because it certainly wasn't manga fans. The lore was still ever-changing and not set in stone. I'm not going to explain why this was, because that would be way too long. You just need to know that this video is somehow both full of spoilers and incredibly out of date. It serves absolutely no purpose. Alternate history is fiction. That's it. It's a genre of fiction which is used to tell stories, or a very elaborate way to have a setting. At its core, this is just fan fiction for history nerds, and that genre takes on a lot of different shapes online. It can be people on forums debating what might have been, using all the little historical facts and examples to prove their case. It can be people just simply making short stories using timelines. Or they can even be poorly researched videos on YouTube. Alternate history has just as much educational merit as science fiction. The what if is something that none of us will ever truly know. No matter how much thought and research goes into these little hypotheticals, all this will ever be is very elaborate fiction. Alternate history on YouTube is a much different beast than it was from those days of nerds just making PowerPoint videos. As silly as these simple little videos are, I think we have something to learn from them. Alternate history should never be about figuring out what makes everything tick. Nobody truly knows the patterns of history. This genre of fiction should be a non-serious conversation between history buffs. I love what I do. I love the videos that I make and have made, most of the time. There are many projects that even years later I still think have held up. So what was the point of this? Why spend this 10-year anniversary spectacular showcasing all the worst elements of my channel? Well, these videos first and foremost were always meant to start a conversation. So so I'm just using them again to start a conversation. With enough experience comes understanding what works and what doesn't. Never think you can't improve. Never think you can't learn more. I can only hope that years from now, I'll look back and see the videos that I currently make. I hope I recoil in disgust, because that means at least I'm improving. Because of everyone who has supported this channel, despite its flaws, I can keep trying to be better. What was that? You want me to say it? Okay, fine. This is Cody of Alternate History Hub. This PowerPoint video is terrible. It's just factually incorrect. And what's with this weird two steps from hell music? I'm turning it off. Stop right there, Jimmy. Oh god, it's me, the creator of that terrible video you're watching from 10 years in the future. Oh, uh, okay. What if I told you that if you keep watching that video and supporting my channel, then years and years from now, I will slightly improve as a creator. I would say, uh, uh good luck, I, I guess. Oh, uh, okay. What are you about to say? Oh, nothing. I was, I was just going to say that this video was sponsored by NordVPN. Oh, that's obnoxious. Now, if you've been living in the past or under a rock, you might not know what NordVPN is. It's a virtual private network that helps keep your IP address and information safe. But did you know that NordVPN wants to keep you informed on cybersecurity and what actions you can take now to protect yourself online? Last time we talked about man-in-the-middle attacks and password stuffing, so how about we move on to malvertising? Wow, I didn't know there were so many of those in my area. Sign me up! Now wait right there, Jimmy. It's highly likely that ad about females being interested in you is nothing but lies. You're the mascot for an alternate history channel. Your chances with women died long ago. You fell for the oldest trick in the internet book, Jimmy. The malvertisement. Or as regular people call them, pop-up ads. Simply clicking on these ads can send you to a bad party destination. A bad site which can automatically pick up malware that is put onto your computer or phone, potentially infecting it with the virus. 
So how to avoid this from happening? It's simple, either use an ad blocker or NordVPN's threat protection ad blocking. So you're secure on your IP address and also don't have to see any obnoxious ads. NordVPN is focused on making sure you know how to be safe online. NordVPN specializes in protecting your IP address from dangers on the internet. Whether in public or simply at home, you never know how your information may be taken. And using a VPN is the best way to have that peace of mind. Pick from NordVPN's 5400 plus servers in 59 countries. You don't need to worry about borders or the policy of where you live. If you want better security online today, you can get NordVPN by going to nordvpn.com slash althis to get a huge discount on a two-year plan plus four free additional months. It's risk-free with their 30-day money-back guarantee. That's nordvpn.com slash althist. <coughs> Sorry, that uh, that just happens a lot in the future. Seriously though, Jimmy, stop clicking on suspicious ads. That's like Internet 101. I, I get it's 2012, but ask your parents' permission before going online or something. Y you clearly cannot be trusted.